What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the DX Gamer Show. I'm Mike, aka Operation DX, and it would seem that with all the likes you gave me on the last video, uh, which I don't do too often, um, some of you are like, don't ask for likes. I hate when people do that, but I, I rarely, rarely do that. I only did that to gauge to see if you guys would actually like to see me play through career mode in Kerbal Space Program, and it seems that uh, you would like to see me do that. So that's what we're gonna do. Anyway, real quick here, I'm just double checking on the research that I collected during the last video. And I was thinking about doing that orbital flight, but I'd like to have the LV-909 engine, which I have not unlocked. It makes it a lot easier to get up into orbit. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at some of these contracts and see if I can't fulfill some of them. So that looks like something I can do. Uh, just launch off the pad with the uh, LV, uh, LVT-45. Uh, this next one is just use the decouplers. That shouldn't be a problem also on the launch pad. So we'll have to build a uh, somewhat unique rocket. I think I want to add another contract in here, but you can't do that unless you upgrade the building. And it looks like we need, in order to use the flight planning, which I really, really want uh, for later, I'll go ahead and upgrade the uh, facility here. Also, I would like to get my Kerbals to be able to disembark uh, I think that's only around Kerbin, so I went ahead and upgraded that. And I'm pretty much almost out of money here, so i got to be careful. So this is the parachute, and I have to do it at a certain speed, at a certain altitude. Got to kind of really read these contracts because uh, it's easy to mess them up. And I'm just going to double check and see if there's anything else I can do. This is at a, uh, a certain location around Kerbin. I don't think I'm going to do this one. Um, these guys just want to be ferried to a suborbital flight. Uh, I don't know if I need the passenger thing or if I can connect a couple of command pods to do that. Uh, I might try to do that later. And let's see, ejection flight. Yeah, so I'm going to knock some of these out real quick. And then uh, I think for the second flight, I'll go ahead and knock out that contract that... Uh, wants us to do an orbital flight. That should be no problem once we unlock the LV-909s again. Uh, those engines are much more efficient when you get them up into orbit, which will give me uh, considerably more Delta V. And with all the restrictions, it makes it really hard to do with uh, the current setup I have right now. I don't even know if I could get into orbit with what I have available. Anyways, I'm building a basic command pod again here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and save this because I don't want to do this like every single time. But as I'm doing this, um, I'm thinking of one of the comments uh, that struck me kind of funny. They're like, DX, give yourself some extra science so you can skip the potato phase. I didn't realize that this was called the potato phase. It uh, just struck me kind of funny. Of course, I'm like way out of the loop. And uh, yeah, so there could be some disasters to come. But uh, again, that's probably some of the fun parts. So. Um, this rocket I'm building right here is specifically kind of like being curtailed towards the contracts that I picked up. I got to do a couple of interesting things on the launch pad. One being launching with the uh, LVT-45. Two, I have to test out uh, these radio decouplers. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach just something next to them that's probably going to explode the second I launch these off. And then... Um, just because of the new aerodynamics model, I'm going to go ahead and put some tail fins on here. Oh, not that many. I'm just going to go ahead and do four. And I believe this is my rocket. So I have three contracts I need to fulfill. Uh, the LVT-45, I think. Gosh, I don't know. I hope I'm not saying that uh, wrong. I feel like I'm saying it wrong. The radio decouplers. And then I need to deploy the M16 parachute between 14 and 19,000 going at between 400 and 900 meters per second. I don't know. So <laughs> I'm just going to play it safe and go 500 meters per second. So this should be a fairly easy one to do. So right there, I fulfilled two of the contracts. Not worth a ton. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tilt my craft retrograde. Of course, we're not going into orbit. We are just simply... Uh, just doing this so we can fulfill these contracts and I don't know if you know it's 
super economical to be doing one or two contracts at a time or if it's like you want to do a whole bunch kind of thing so you're not wasting money i don't know because like we are shedding parts and we are losing parts so it's of course losing us money i don't know how challenging this career mode it seems like they tweaked it the last time i kind of checked it out so it seems much more difficult even on normal <laughs> so i'm kind of worried uh but that's part of the fun like i said could be a complete disaster and uh i do apologize to some of you uh guys that have probably surpassed my skill in kerbal space program <laughs> and you have to uh, watch me do this but um that's kind of fun the fun you know w one person that used to be kind of an expert is uh no longer and i'm probably gonna make all kinds of mistakes all right so it looks like i did fulfill the contracts that i set out to do i did three of them i think that's somewhat efficient i hope um of course that orbital flight looks like it's gonna give us all kinds of money and of course i'm speeding up the video so i can save a little time here I'll always do that and then I think I'm going to try to grab a little bit of science. I've already uh, deployed my goo canister and my lab. Uh, I'm going to try to do... Should I do a crew report from this location? Uh, I'm definitely going to do an EVA report. Um, and I'm going to hop back in. And do a crew report. I don't know. It's probably not going to be worth that much science. Yeah, it's worth a little bit. And then, of course, I'm going to go ahead and disembark, and I'm going to do one more EVA report in the grasslands, and then I'll go ahead and plant a flag, because that's something we can do by upgrading that building. Of course, I don't think that gives us any science, but uh, it does kind of give us a general location, or at least it used to give you a general location of where the... Um, the KSC Center is, of course, since I've played this so much, I'm I'm really familiar with all the continents and stuff, so I know exactly where the launch center is. You can pretty much see it from orbit, that little kind of outskirt on the, the land mass. You can see that flat land. All right, Jeb was here, and uh, this is just Jeb. Just Jeb gets all that science. It's also kind of nice that you don't have to go into that one menu to recover the craft. If we can see it from the launch center, we can just kind of uh, recover them from here. I think that's kind of a nice thing. So there we go. That's pretty much all the science we collected. That should be plenty to go ahead and pick up the LV-909s, but I don't think I'm gonna have enough to get anything else. So I better start getting some more science a little more quickly or uh, it's gonna be kind of Kind of tough to do some stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my launch pad. That gives me the ability to launch some heavier craft, uh, which I might need in order to do that orbital flight because I'm really limited on parts. But there is the big engine that I want, the LV-909, which is more efficient once you get that guy up into orbit. And I think the rocket I'm going to build, since I don't have some of the parts I think I'm used to, um, I'm going to do something a little kind of unconventional. Something I would probably never, never use. Um, so well, let's just see here. I'm just going to double check one more time. Look through some of these contracts to see if uh, I could do something in included with that orbital flight. Some of these you have to read very carefully to make sure that uh, they're doable on your current mission. It doesn't look like that's something I can do. Let's check this other Rocco Max out here. Also, doesn't look like something I'm going to be do, able to do for my orbital flight. Uh, weird. So, man, you have to use a solid rocket booster for an ejection out of Kerbin? That is freaking a weird contract. Now, I don't know if it's a good idea. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments. But some of these contracts, like, is it a good idea to just abandon some of them because they're too ridiculous so you're not going to be able to do... I'm kind of interested in about doing those uh, passenger flights, even though they don't give uh, a lot of money. I know once I get that module, but uh, these are time time limited. I don't know how that works. So, like, I don't know if it's based on, like, once you click it and say you're going to do it or, like, after three days, that contract is no longer going to be available. I'm, I'm assuming the system's somewhat procedural and it kind of just always gives me contracts. 
I don't know. I definitely don't want to miss out on the big stuff. So anyways, let's go ahead and build my orbital vehicle here. So I'm using essentially the same command pod, AKA potato. <laughs> just strikes me funny every time. And uh, I'm just gonna just load up on the, on the bottom here with a bunch of fuel tanks. And again, I'm gonna do something a little bit unconventional. So uh, I'm gonna use those radial engines which give you, I think, a better ISP in atmosphere, but uh, they have they don't give you a good ISP once you get into orbit. Of course, that's what the uh, LV-909 is for. And I just want to double check. I love that little uh, like wrench thing in the bottom. You can just double check to see uh, what your limitations are and stuff. And since I upgraded the launch pad, um, I could do that. But I'm still limited to 30 parts because I have the base uh, VAB, so I might want to upgrade that pretty soon. It's pretty freaking expensive, and I've been spending my money maybe a little too fast. I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here. It's X2. No, no, no. We need to name the. Oops. We need to, we need, we need to name this something proper. Of course, I uh, pull the thing off to the side here, and that drop-down menu is in my way, so I can't reconnect my craft. Um, I'm going to call this uh, X2 Orbiter appropriately and uh, hopefully this guy can make it I'll call this version one just in case this is a uh, fail rocket uh, seems like it should be able to it seems like there's a lot of fuel tanks but with those four engines that should be enough to be able to get me up into orbit I don't know um, with that suborbital hop I've already spent uh, the good portion of the science that I'm gonna get from uh, when I'm in orbit of course I can do the EVA now so let's kind of see what happens. I'm going to launch this guy. Definitely going to speed up time on this guy. I can't say I know exactly the, when the most optimal moment to do my gravity turn with this craft is. I'm pretty much going to do my standard thing. I always wing it, which sometimes can get me into trouble. Sometimes I do okay. Uh, I figure the best thing to do with this craft is to get as high as possible before I fire the LV-909. So it's about 29,000. I don't know if that's optimal for the LV-909, but that's pretty up there. So I should have no problem. Almost have a full tank here getting into orbit. And I should be able to get into a stable orbit. No problem whatsoever. Of course, because I did that suborbital flight earlier, I did a majority of the science that I'm going to get for uh, being in orbit so when I go ahead and do my lab and my goo I'm probably not going to get very much so there we go I am in orbit and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, get my little teeny tiny bit of science that uh, I'm going to get I don't know maybe maybe I'll fly around and do some uh, some bio hunting around Kerbin to collect some extra science I'm not sure but yep going to get this stuff I don't think my crew report's going to give me anything. Yeah, zero science. That's unfortunate. But I can go EVA, so I'm going to go ahead and collect that. I don't know how much that's going to be worth. Just a little bit. Not a ton. Probably going to get a contract to go to the moon or do a, uh, uh, a rendezvous thing. I'm sure the contracts will probably help me out with that, keep me on pace. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and double check all the stuff we got. Of course, we did get the Orbital 1, which gave us a nice chunk of money. Anyway, I'll deorbit this craft for the next video. That's pretty much it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a great day and take care.